Seth Stokes, 106.3 WORD News here in Traveler's Rest, the Swamp Rabbit Brewery, downtown TR. I'm here with Ben Pearson, uh, co-owner and brewmaster at the Swamp Rabbit uh, Brewery and Tap Room. Uh, ben, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to talk with me. Uh, and this week, we're, our uh, 106.3 WORD cover story is on breweries and craft distilleries uh, in the upstate. And this one is one of my favorites. I've been here a time or two and I've enjoyed several of the brews here. And I think it's awesome what y'all have going on. Um, but Ben, tell me a little bit about how Swamp Rabbit uh, Brewery and Tap Room got started. Wow, well, um, I started home brewing back in the early 80s. And I think it's, it was always a dream that I had to be an owner and own my own brewery uh, 24 years later uh, it happened so I guess I'm a patient guy there you go now as a, a local uh, brewer here in the upstate uh, what are some of the challenges you faced um, specifically from dealing with you know the lawmakers and, and the rules and regulations of opening an establishment like this well you know you have to be licensed uh, federally and at the state level and uh, thanks to some early legislation allowing for uh, craft breweries and brew pubs in the state of South Carolina. Uh, started out as you could be one, but not both. Um, if you wanted to distribute beer in South Carolina, you, you would have to have a brewer's permit and a distributor involved, which is you know, pure three-tier. Uh, legislation and if you were going to be a brew pub or if you are a brew pub in South Carolina you can serve on premise uh, but you can't sell for resale and you can't distribute your beer so that's the basic difference you know, we'd love to distribute beer through a distributor even but uh, we'd have to change our license from a brew pub to a brewery and then if we wanted to continue to sell beer uh, on premise uh, more than three beers per person uh, we'd have to have a kitchen too so it kind of uh, made breweries uh, you know sub subject to the same thing they have the permit already but if they want to serve unlimited amounts of beer mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't sound good but more than three beers per person then they t technically need uh, a restaurant too so we're a brew pub we may serve food but we choose not to um, and we can only serve beer on premise okay so you couldn't come in and, and buy a sixer of of the type of brew you want and and go home with it well you can come in we do growlers mm -hmm. both half gallon and and quart size you can take those home those are sealed and labeled um if i believe that we have the right to sell if you bring a container in we can fill it and you can take it home um again you can't we can't do that for resale gotcha. so someone couldn't come in here and uh get a growler and take it out and sell it and that right. would be it on him but uh so is the licensing is a difference between uh like like here, the Swamp Rabbit, maybe like a Thomas Creek? Right, completely different licenses. So we're a brew pub, mm -hmm. uh, federally and at the state level. Thomas Creek is uh, 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 growing to be a larger craft brewery and um, permitted as such, yeah. Now, in your years of, of brewing craft beer and uh, being involved in the scene, how much have you seen the craft brew kind of craze uh, grow the past few years here in, in the upstate? Well, the past, uh, I mean, I started in 87, um, and it was on fire then, and it kind of peaked out, and some people uh, uh, got into it and got out, and then it, it's been, you know, uh, spiked growth on and off over the years i would say in the past 10 years we've seen major growth here in south carolina and certainly in 
every state in the country that allows uh, craft breweries and, and brew pubs to exist. So the demand is high. I think people are kind of like the same with uh, distilleries or wine that people are uh, buying into the fact that it's made locally, mm -hmm. that it has uh, high quality about it, and uh, you know, people like to support people that live in their communities versus people from overseas. Now, why do you think people are, other than the fact that it is brewed locally, why do you think people prefer to, to drink a craft brew as opposed to a mass-produced, you know, Budweiser or something like that? Yeah, um, I think people are buying into the fact that it can be a better quality beer. Mm -hmm. That's not always the case, but many of us uh, are making unfiltered uh, beers that are hoppy or less hoppy, uh, probably pushing the envelope a little bit on what kind of raw materials they might be using, like sours or wild beers. Or, and so we have a lot... It's pretty much wide open. I mean, the beer styles are uh, becoming hybridized and, and changed, and, and some, of course, have stayed the same for hundreds of years. So there's uh, an avenue for uh, people in the craft brewery business to follow their dreams as to what kind of beers that they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, market seems to be very supportive. Uh, certainly, uh, the the market in South Carolina has been uh, growing considerably. I think there's, if I'm not wrong, I think there are like 60 breweries uh, and brew pubs in the state. Um, in North Carolina, I think it's it's more like 360. Um, but it's very popular. Uh, you've got to make a good beer. You've got to be a good business person. Uh, if, if you don't run the business properly, it's hard to make beer. It's very true. That's very true. What, with the you know, 60 or so uh, breweries and brew pubs here in, here in South Carolina, what is the camaraderie like in the community? Oh, yeah. I think the, we all uh, we like to do collaborations. Um, they're very popular where breweries from the upstate will do one way down in uh, Charleston or uh, points in between so I think that w publicly and privately we all enjoy each other's company um, we're you know beer has always been a uh, particular a um, uh, not jealous but aggressive mm -hmm. kind of an industry where um, if you're the, the attitude that if you're not if you're drinking someone else's beer you're not drinking ours and that doesn't that exists more on the big scale of beer the Anheusers the Millers and Coors uh, are more involved in that than the craft brewers are uh, not adhering to that old dogma that every you know everybody's your enemy and uh, you have to treat them accordingly and I think you know the camaraderie is awesome uh, the great american beer festival in denver will have you know two thousand breweries eight thousand beers to be judged everybody's having a good time everybody's pretty sharing with uh you know quote unquote top secret right their secrets whatever so it's interesting it's different and mm. it's evolved now, setting up a brewery in the South, um, anytime something of that nature comes along, no matter the industry, there's typically some pushback from a community here or there. Um, did you experience any of that when you set up Swamp Rabbit here in Traveler's Rest? Well, I think, you know, every community is a little Bible belty. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's pretty much nationwide. And so you've got those people that, you know, are anti-alcohol, don't want it in their community. Thank heavens they're uh, in the minority, and so yeah, I mean, the legend, or you know, to get a permit, um, the state and uh, and sled are 
uh, pretty demanding. You're going to give it. You're going to do what they ask you to do, and you're going to be vetted a lot better than we're doing in our government these days. But uh, they're going to know federal government and the state government is going to know everything about everybody mm -hmm. that wants one of these permits, and they're going to make sure that everybody abides by the law. Um, so I'm not. Uh, I'm not against that. I think. Uh, you know, when we when we started up, uh, we I think we were two or three weeks from being open, and uh, the old ATF or it's the Treasury Tax Bureau now gave me a call, and said we applied to be a brewery and a brewer's permit is what we wanted, and they just flat out denied that they were going to give us that permit because of the way that we. Uh, dispense our beers and so we dispense out of serving tanks breweries have to declare their taxes uh, when they fill kegs and and bottles and whatnot so um, they told us at the last minute we weren't going to get a brewer's permit and we were a little panicky right then but understandably so you know uh, I think Lindsey Graham came in was he was visiting uh, uh, doing some election work up here, and I think there are some other uh, senators from the state that came to our aid, and uh, we got things worked out, and it worked out, but it was pretty sketchy at the time. Now that you are here and established, it seemed to be a very popular location here in TR for people to come on a weeknight or a weekend night. Uh, what seems to be the most popular beer that uh, your patrons choose? Uh, well, I don't think there's any question that uh, we do a raspberry white ale we call Red Whitey. Uh, that beer is, sells very quickly, but day in and day out, our best selling beer is the white ale. It's a Belgian white ale, and, uh, but the Marzen beer, the APA, American Pale Ale, uh, are all uh, really close in sales. Mm -hmm. So on, on any given week, one of them might uh, earn more sales than the white ale. But it, it, at the end of the year, the white ale is just uh, ahead of everything else. And I think you know it's it's a little more approachable to mm -hmm. all beer drinkers because it's lighter in body. And uh, we do make some beers that are uh, full bodied and uh, more or less hoppy. Right. And so we've got something for everybody in here. Uh, if, if you don't want a, a, a dark beer, then we've got yellow beers, and we've got a lot of amber ales and amber lagers, um, red ales. Mm -hmm. So we try to do, you know, we do porters and stouts and uh, German-style Hefeweizens, and, you know, we like to think that uh, I was trained in Germany, and... And I believe in the way that they, uh, their protocols and formulations and styles of beer. And, and you know, I believe in the Belgians too. Mm -hmm. They're both very academic. Uh, even uh, the wild and uh, sour beers are very academic. If you're going to be good at them, you got to know a lot of the underlying principles. There's a lot to know. Oh, I don't doubt that. It's a science, just like anything else. Uh, now, when you go to these brew fests and, and you talk to other uh, breweries from around the country, and how strict or lax compared to some of the surrounding states, North Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, uh, are the, the laws here in South Carolina? Well, you, you know, I would think the, the, the most lenient, most brewer friendly state is North Carolina. I think South Carolina is, is starting to work on making it easier for breweries and brew pubs to, to sell beer and to make money. I think, uh, you know, the, the South really has not had much of a history of beer if you look at it, uh, you know, on a continuum from the earliest days mm -hmm. because of refrigeration and the lack thereof. So, states like Georgia. Uh, Mississippi, uh, you know, pretty stringent re laws and requirements, and uh, they're very slow to change, as you know, and South Carolina is very slow to change. Right. You know, you're not going to uh, get things done in a hurry. And um, so I think we're, we're all subject to that, obviously. Uh, we'd like to see 
the laws be like they are in North Carolina, where if you if you're a brewery or a brew pub, you'd be able to distribute the beer yourself if you wanted to, or go through a distributor, and uh, as long as you stay in state, and uh, it, it makes it a lot easier for brew pubs with more capacity than they're selling in house to be able to come out and get a distributor and. Uh, perish the thought that we'd be able to distribute by ourselves and we're talking very small numbers not right millions of barrels we're talking hundreds of barrels so uh, um, you know I think uh, it's all out there to be changed I think that the South Carolina Brewers Guild is uh, organized to approach these issues have done you know the new legislation passed this year uh, is a is a good first step, and uh, you know uh, you know being someone who's been around a long time and has seen the proliferation of breweries in North Carolina and other states that are a little more lenient on uh, sales inside and outside the house and distribution rights available to all either like I said self distribute or distribute through uh, distributors in the state. Um, if these things come to pass, and I'm sure they will, um, it just makes it a little easier to survive the business. You got to make money to pay your staff. You have mm -hmm. to pay your lease or, you know, your mortgage or raw materials and attending all these festivals. This is not inexpensive. If you want to go to Denver and compete at the Great American Beer Festival, it's, you know, better part of a week pretty pricey uh, but no better place to go and uh, find out how good you are now what do you feel separates Swamp Rabbit from the other breweries and brew pubs here in the upstate what makes you guys unique well uh, our protocols are German um, we don't filter uh, or add there are a lot of beer additives that uh, that uh, you know, breweries can add to their product to do various things. So we try to do it naturally as we can. We use a lot of lager yeast here. Uh, we give beer a lot more time to be to become ready. In other words, we might our lager beers are usually always 45 days old, whereas ales that uh, are coming out. Um, in the craft business in the upstate might be 11 days to 18 days so um, handling uh, not filtering quality raw materials we use grains from germany and czechoslovakia or uh, ireland uh, south america hops pretty much anywhere in the world except for south uh, Africa, which have been uh, uh, taken out of the mix, but um, we we can get these materials. We like to use them. The beers that we do here, as probably they are for everybody in the, in the upstate, the raw materials are not cheap, mm -hmm. and and so we have to charge a little more, as everybody does, because of that. And plus, shipping is pretty outrageous uh, and expensive and if you're bringing it in from Ireland or uh, you know Germany or Italy or from wherever uh, the price is pretty high for us little guys. I understand. Ben I thank you so much for taking some time to talk to me about Swamp Rabbit Brewery and just the craft brew scene here in the upstate. I uh, can't wait to come back and sample some more of your beers. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Seth Stokes, 106.3 WORD News.